Are we the people still in control of this nation? We must begin to act like we are. If we keep shipping our manufacturing jobs across the border and around the world and deindustrializing our country, we will not be able to defend this great country, and that is a risk we will never take. He started off as uh, head of United We Stand. I'm afraid he's going to end up as head of Divided We Fall. Everything that he is worried about will get worse if NAFTA is defeated. We want jobs for America's working men and women. We want to get rid of the barriers that have prevented us from selling what we make in other countries. This is an historic opportunity to do that. No one said that the idea of NAFTA was for American corporations to move out of America, go across the Rio Grande and build a factory, exploit the Mexican workers, and then ship back in here to sell their products. That wasn't what we were told. We were told they are dying to buy our refrigerators. They're dying to buy our cars. They want the American dream. They want our televisions. None of that happened. Today, they don't have the votes in the House of Representatives. We're in the third quarter. They can get them because they're buying them big time with your tax money. We're working the halls night and day to make sure it doesn't happen. You can play a key role in it. But sure, they all tried to sell it to you, and the fact that they couldn't demonstrates that this deal is not well, good okay, for our country. Let me get a break and then we'll do it. But it doesn't impress you that every former president supports it? impresses it. me that they couldn't do it. Oh, but well, it's not over with they yeah. support it. That they show, those are the guys that cut the worst trade deals in history. He's already talked about it. It's not, it's right. not over with. Wait just have, a minute now. It's well, not they did the yet. Japanese deals. They did the Chinese deals. Well, God we'll bless the vice, them. We'll they cost the you two million jobs. Two million jobs. We'll you think the, they fooled Colin Powell? He's a great soldier. He doesn't know anything about business. In a few moments, I will sign the North American Free Trade Act into law. NAFTA will tear down trade barriers between our three nations. It will create the world. Can I say something about this? I didn't interrupt you. Okay, no, uh, guys. It's July of 2000, and we're back in your hometown, Billy. More employees are told that they are laid off. But in reality, their jobs are now gone. For those who remain at the plant, employee wages are cut from $26 per hour to $16 per hour. Why doesn't their union stop the wage cuts? The corporation that owns the auto plant threatened to move the jobs to Mexico if the employees didn't take a drastic pay cut. At least they get to keep their jobs. In our Mexican city, more Mexican farmers have lost their farms due to U.S. corn dumping. The local factory hires more Mexicans to replace the workers that were laid off in your hometown, Billy. Also in July of 2000, Mexico signs a free trade agreement with the European Union. In time, this will indirectly give all of the European Union tariff-free access to the U.S. market. We have seen American jobs go to Mexico. And in turn, we haven't seen uh, the life of the Mexican worker improve. Actually, the standard of living of the average worker in Mexico has gone down. Many more average Mexicans have lost their farms and their livelihoods. It's estimated that more than 1.2 million Mexican agricultural jobs have been lost to NAFTA. Unfortunately for those who are unemployed, there haven't been near enough manufacturing jobs created to make up for the lost agricultural jobs. Hey, where are those Mexican workers going? They're going illegally to El Norte, or the North. These displaced farmers have been a major factor in the surge of illegal immigrants from Mexico living in the United States. What you're really touching on is the unintended consequences of globalization and the moronic belief that while it is bad for American workers, that somehow it is good for poor people all over the world that we are raising their standard of living. And what we saw in Mexico is clearly that is not the case. Hey, where'd the auto parts plant go? Sorry, Billy but the corporation that owns the plant is moving it to Mexico. It's the Mexicans! That's right, Billy. Since these Mexicans have lost their jobs in Mexico, they've come here to find jobs. That means more competition for poorer jobs for the people of your town, Billy. We had a CEO of a company come in and make all kinds of
promises and within two years uh, most of those workers are gone today. The company got everything they wanted from the Congress and in fact the workers got the shaft. I didn't have the money to get on those morning talk shows on Sunday morning as they did. I was actually denied the ability to go onto those programs and speak my piece because Archer Daniel Midland and the proponents of NAFTA sponsored the time. So then I really understood for the first time as a member of Congress how powerful they really were. It's obvious that many of the companies uh, that went to Mexico uh, because of NAFTA are now looking beyond uh, Mexico to China and other places uh, pursuing cheap labor. The, the CEOs of the major corporations, in particular the manufacturing corporations in the United States today, do not have a very good track record of keeping their word. What they have a good track record at is trying to increase their profits in the backs of workers. These are the people that are over on Capitol Hill with their lobbyists saying, we need more trade agreements like NAFTA because they made a ton of money on NAFTA and now they want to do the same thing, finding even cheaper later in Guatemala, Chile, or wherever in South America. Last week, Congress passed the Central American Dominican Republic Free Trade Agreement. I want to thank the Republicans and Democrats who came together to support this important agreement. The bill I'm about to sign is good for America. NAFTA is about institutionalizing cheap labor. Multinational corporations want trade agreements where they can make a profit by closing factories in the U.S. and moving jobs to places where workers have no rights and work for very low wages. Today, the House of Representatives took historic action with the passage of the American Clean Energy and Security Act. And uh, rather than ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading, the rules require that the amendment be read. The clerk will read the bill. America is interested when it creates every section put on definitions of the Section 204 eligible. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask, I ask unanimous consent that the reading of the amendment be dispensed with. A necessary step that holds the promise of creating new industries and millions of new jobs. If we do everything in this bill, they say the best case scenario, we could decrease the increase in temperature by 0.18 degrees by 2100. Woohoo! Let's have a party. Right. Plus, it's going to cost two trillion, two million jobs. It's going to cost two trillion dollars. Everything you buy and use is going to cost more. Right. And they're going to offset that with some kind of a payroll tax? Are yeah. you kidding me? In the middle of this recession? Plus, <laughs> but the, the, the only jobs that they're going to create is jobs for bureaucrats. But those are unproductive jobs that the rest of us have to support. It's going to destroy productive jobs. I mean, even if our economy was in good shape, this, this bill is ridiculous, or, but given how bad our economy is right now, the fact that our leaders are this clueless, that they're going to try to cripple it with burdensome taxes and regulation, when we need to be as efficient as possible. I mean, we really need to rebuild our industry, not cripple it uh, with, with this cap and tax nonsense. Right. Because I'm capping greenhouse gases, coal power plants, you know, natural gas, you name it, whatever the plants were, whatever the industry was, they would have to retrofit their operations. That will cost money. They will pass that money on to consumers. This is not a cutesy issue. We're talking about no, that, that can that... export millions of jobs out of our economy, out of our country, and testimony has been given just to those numbers. And so we're talking about a serious consequence that there would be on this country and the carbon leakage that would occur where the carbon would be emitted, but it would be emitted in China and India, and the jobs would go to China and India. And that's been testified before this committee in the last few days as well. So man, you testify about the actual cost. Do you want to man? Man-made global warming pollution causes global warming. Now, now this is a this is a good deal for our country. Supposed to be a feel-good event. Secretary of State Clinton and her special envoy for climate change, Todd Stern. The United States and other emitters of greenhouse gases should shoulder the biggest burden for cleaning up the environment and reducing our carbon footprint. We are simply not in a position to take on legally binding emission reduction, reduction targets. We need you in India. Someone's got to train the new guy. And after that, we'll find something for you. Company's growing. We'll find something for you. 
Of course, you're free to quit, but you haven't vested your stock options yet. Quit now and you give it up. You'll be out there in a bad job market with no unemployment benefits. That's these guys in about 20 minutes. No, no, no way, no. I'm not going to India to train my own replacement. All you need to do is visit the call center, improve the minutes for incident, and make sure the new guy's up to speed. Or does this new guy get paid? Half a million rupees. <laughs> That's $11,000 a year to do your job. And it's eight heads for the price of one. <laughs> what are you going to do?